Shalom, friends. Akiva Gersh here. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to share with you uh, some updates on this ongoing war that has been going since October 7th, right? This war that began as a result of the barbaric attack by Hamas terrorists breaking through the border between the Gaza Strip and Israel. Thousands of terrorists pouring into Israel and invading and attacking Israeli communities along the border with Gaza, killing over 1,200 Israeli citizens, civilians, and soldiers, and taking into captivity over 200 Israelis. Uh, there remain over 130 still there. And that's why this, this war is a very, very different kind of war, which is something that we've said here in previous weeks already a couple of times, but I'll say it again. It's important to say that Israel said from the get-go that this was going to be a very, very different kind of war. We have fought about five wars with Hamas um before this war since uh, israel left in 2005 in the disengagement this war is very different as the goal of this war is about toppling hamas completely getting them out of control um, making sure that they are never again a threat to israel uh, from the gaza ship and that the civilians the uh, hundreds of thousands of civilians that, that lived along the border with gaza who are now living in other places around the country since october 7th can come back to their homes peacefully and with safety and security. Uh, but they won't do that until Israel, the government, the IDF is absolutely sure that nothing like this can and will ever happen again. And thank God Israel has, has had tremendous success in, in taking out lots of uh, Hamas terrorists, Hamas infrastructure, uh, buildings, tunnels. But we know that there are hundreds of miles of tunnels in Gaza. They talk about not just an underground network of tunnels, but literally an underground Gaza. Uh, what they built with hundreds of millions of dollars of, of, of humanitarian aid that poured into Gaza over the past many, many years. Uh, instead of it going to the civilians, it went into building this terror infrastructure that has been used many times, and this time being the worst time uh, to attack Israel. So specifically, the uh, past few days, this past uh, week, one of the, the, the most recent and and shocking and horrifying stories that have come out is, is the fact that there are staff members of UNWAR. Uh, UNWAR is a United Nations Relief and Works Agency that is specifically all about um, providing assistance, support, and aid to Palestinians living in, in, in the Gaza Strip uh, and in uh, Judea and Samaria. Um, they are the main providers of services, if not the sole providers uh, in the Gaza Strip, and they receive hundreds of millions of dollars in aid from countries around the world. Uh, the U.S. leading that list of, of, of giving aid. And we just found that staffers from this organization were actually part of, they took part uh, in the October 7th attack. And as a result, the U.S. has halted, halted funding, uh, thank God, good for them, as well as other countries, uh, as well as U.K., Finland, and Italy as well, joined the U.S. in halting their funding. Um, one of the members of, uh, of the Israeli government uh, said that there's no way that UNWAR could be part of a post-war reality in Gaza after this has been discovered. Netanyahu uh, spoke today on, um, you're seeing this the next day, but as I'm recording this, it's Holocaust um, International Holocaust Memorial Day. Um, and and uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke uh, about, you know, the fact that uh, the, the lessons of the Holocaust have, have not been learned, and specifically in relation to the uh, horrible accusation by South Africa uh, against Israel, that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, you probably know about the court case that was brought by South Africa to the International Court of Justice, uh, The Hague, and uh, they just released on Friday their initial kind of findings. They did not uh, say that uh, Israel is guilty of, of genocide, but they did say that there is plausibility uh, to the accusation by South Africa and that uh, Israel needs to do, you know, um, you know, everything they could do to prevent a genocide, basically, which we know here in Israel, what was happening in Gaza is, is nothing close to genocide. Right? We are more than any other nation would, would ever do in the world, uh, targeting uh, our attacks and our military actions against terrorists, against terrorist leaders. And of course, because of the way that Hamas embeds itself into the civilian population, it is unfortunately, sadly impossible uh, for civilians not to also um, 
be victims and and get hurt and 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 killed uh in this war this is a war and unfortunately so sadly right it breaks our heart uh, civilians die in every single war and this war is no exception but again israel has done so much and continues to do so much uh to prevent uh, uh civilian casualties so to 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 accuse israel of genocide is literally just absolutely abs absurd nothing else really uh to say that Right, but the the International Court of Justice told Israel to prevent genocide in Gaza, as if that's you know not something that we're already doing uh, very much and very well. Um, in terms of you know soldiers, uh, some groups of soldiers have been brought out, uh, giving uh, either a break or saying that right now we don't need you anymore after three plus months of fighting. Right? It's unbelievable what's happening in this country. Men, you know, have left their homes, their jobs, their families, their wives, their kids within hours of of the attack on October 7th and I've been home some of them literally like once or twice since October 7th some of them maybe once every 10 days for like uh for a day depending on their unit where they are what their what their unit is focusing on um but uh it's it's not it's not easy obviously for for the women who who are in the home on their own having to keep up a family take care of kids you know uh keep up a household work and and jobs and all that and um, so some, um, you know, uh, soldiers have been released. Um, they know that they might be called back in. Uh, in my own family, uh, we have soldiers that were recently uh, released from their uh, reserve duty, others who are still there. Um, and this is just, you know, part of life in Israel, right? Everyone knows somebody, a uh, friend, family member, brother, cousin, father, son, whoever, you know, whoever it is, daughters, um, were part of uh, the the you know the, the protection of this country, um, and um, you know I, I always like to highlight that since the beginning of the war, it's not only the military that has mobilized uh, and got into position to defend this country; it's also the civilian population that has mobilized in incredible and big ways to support the soldiers um, in their incredible, important, and holy work that they're doing. Uh, and in this case, also support the evacuated communities and also support the hostages, the families of the hostages. Um, so still, since October 7th, all of these months, still today, there are civilians every single day volunteering on farms across the country because most of the workers who uh, were working on these farms are, are farm workers and they left um, because of the war. And these farmers were left with a huge labor gap. Didn't know how they're they're gonna succeed, survive, continue, provide you know produce for the market here, and civilians just came in and took over and and did whatever they need to do, and and are continuing to do that. There are still incredible efforts of cooking and packaging and purchasing and organizing and boxing food uh, for for the soldiers in the south, inside Gaza, up north, on the border with Lebanon. Not that the army doesn't provide them food, but let's be honest, you know, army rations is not the, the greatest thing for these uh, guys to be eating every single day. And the civilian population is just continuing to pour out their love and support and providing extra food, home-cooked meals, fresh hot meals for these soldiers to, to feel the love and also to get the, a, a bit the more um, delicious and nutritious uh, food inside their bodies as they serve the country and really uh, give uh, give uh, of themselves completely uh, in the protection of this country. So that's some of the updates uh, from the, the past few days, uh, the past week here in Israel. Uh, we'll continue next week. And uh, I know that you're joining me uh, here in Israel, just uh, praying for the soldiers, praying for the hostages uh, to come home, praying for the soldiers and their protection, obviously. Uh, praying for all the families who are affected by this war and all the communities and the entire nation of Israel that we should be safe and secure, strong and uh, protected. And all of your thoughts and all of your prayers and all of your support are a big part of that. And we thank you immensely uh, from here in Israel. All the best and be well.